Imagine a tiny island, no bigger than a soccer field. That's Santa Cruz del Islote. Believe it or not, over 800 people live in this super small island. It's so crowded, you might even see someone exercising right next to, well, something smelly. But on an island this packed, people find a way to make things work. The streets are always alive. Folks chat with their neighbors as they walk by, kids zoom around playing, and there are all sorts of sounds in the air. Having a quiet moment to yourself is pretty much impossible. Everyone is right on top of each other. The houses are tiny too, like little boxes filled with families. Imagine 10 people sharing just 3 beds in one house. It's like a sleepover party that never ends. Clothes and shoes get shoved wherever they fit, like a game of puzzle. Water is super important here, so they mostly save it for drinking. This makes keeping things clean a bit tricky. Even though there's not much space and some surprising neighbors, Santa Cruz del Islote has a special feeling. Everyone knows everyone else, and they help each other out. Life here might be different than what we're used to, but it's full of energy and unexpected fun. Unique Adaptations The Islanders have developed unique ways to cope with their crowded living conditions. Many homes are built illegally without permission from any authority. When there's no more space on the ground, people build upwards, creating multi-story homes. The buildings are so close together that residents sometimes have to walk through each other's homes to get to the other side. Despite its challenges, life continues. On the streets, you can see laundry hung up to dry, barbers at work, children running around, and people fishing or selling food. The community is tightly knit, and everyone knows each other. Historical Background Imagine a super tiny island, like a little green button floating on a big blue ocean. This island is called Santa Cruz del Islote, and according to stories passed down for ages, fishermen found it by accident while looking for a place to escape itchy mosquito bites. They loved how peaceful it was without the bugs, so they decided to stay. Back then, the island wasn't as crowded as it was today. There were just a few houses, like a mini neighborhood. But over time, the island needed to grow a bit bigger to fit more people. Unlike most islands that appear out of nowhere from volcanoes, Santa Cruz del Islote got bigger in a cool way. The islanders used things they found around them like seashells, colorful coral, and even leftover stuff to carefully expand their tiny world. Now, there are lots of houses on the island, all built close together. The cool part is that the island itself sits on a giant underwater mountain made of coral, which helps protect them from big waves. Pretty neat, right? So Santa Cruz del Islote is a special place where people work together to make their homes bigger and stronger, all thanks to a little creativity and a lot of seashells. Challenges of Island Life Living on a beautiful island might seem like a dream, but islanders face some tough problems every day. One of the biggest challenges is getting enough clean water. They can't just turn on a tap. They rely on rain to fill big tanks the whole community uses. But rain doesn't always come and sometimes the island goes for months without a single drop. When it finally does rain, it's a cause for celebration. Another difficulty is having enough electricity. The entire island might only have a few hundred solar panels and batteries to create power, which usually only lasts a few hours each day. If the weather is cloudy or is there not enough sunshine for a while, the whole island can be plugged into darkness for days. Finally, there's no proper system to get rid of waste, so it often ends up dumped in the ocean. This pollutes the water, which is a big problem because fish are a main source of food for the islanders. With all this pollution and overfishing, there are fewer fish around than ever before. To make sure they have enough to eat, they have to bring in fish from the mainland, which adds another complication in their lives. Health and Education Taking care of yourself on the island can be tricky. There's a friendly nurse who lives there and knows everyone. They've probably even helped deliver most of the babies. This nurse can handle everyday bumps and bruises, but for anything more serious, there might be trouble. The island doesn't have all the fancy medical equipment you might find in a big hospital, which can be scary during emergencies. Even with these limitations, it's surprising how long people on the island tend to live. Many islanders reach their 80s and 90s, which is pretty impressive. Maybe the fresh air and relaxed lifestyle have something to do with it. Learning new things can be another challenge on the island. There's only one school and it only goes up to elementary level. This means kids can learn their ABCs and basic math, but for anything beyond that, it gets complicated. Most children have to stay on the island after primary school because their families can't afford to send them elsewhere for more education. This can be tough, especially for kids who are curious and want to keep learning. 
Economy and Tourism Most of the jobs on the island come from tourists visiting. Since Santa Cruz del Isolate is a special protected area, tourists have to pay a fee to enter. This brings in money, and some islanders find work showing visitors around, serving drinks, or helping out in other ways. Fishing and cockfighting are also popular activities that help islanders make some extra cash. The trouble is, there aren't many places for all of these visitors to go. The small streets get even more crowded, and things like clean water and electricity have to be shared with even more people. This can make it tough for the islanders to go about their daily lives. Social structure and culture. Even though there are lots of people on a small island and not many resources to go around, the islanders are very close. They don't need a police force because whenever there's a disagreement, the wise elders and everyone trusts help sort things out. It's like one big family, where everyone looks after each other. Things are pretty relaxed on the island, couples often live together without needing a fancy wedding ceremony, and sometimes people have children with more than one partner. Most islanders are easygoing and love to laugh and joke with each other. Environmental Concerns Taking care of the environment is a big challenge on the island. Because there's no proper way to throw out trash, it often ends up in the ocean. Imagine finding plastic bags, bottles, or even old toilets floating around in the water. This pollution harms the fish and other creatures that live in the ocean, and there just aren't as many fish around anymore. The rainy season can also cause problems. The parts of the island that people built themselves aren't super strong, and heavy rain can flood the streets and even people's homes. That's why most houses have floors built up high off the ground to avoid the water, but floods and no electricity during these storms can make life very difficult for the islanders. A sense of belonging. Even though there are lots of problems to deal with on Santa Cruz del Islote, the people who live there wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Most of them have never even been off the island, and they have no reason to leave. This tiley island is their home, and their happiness comes from being together as a community and sharing their experiences. When night falls, the island comes alive in a special way. Since there's no electricity, everyone uses candles or the lights on their phones to chase away the darkness. Music floats through the air, and people come out to dance, sing, and play games together. Even without bright lights, the spirit of the island keeps on shining strong. Future of Santa Cruz del Islote It's hard to say exactly what the future holds for Santa Cruz del Islote. The island is already full of people, and there aren't just enough resources or buildings to fit many more. This lack of space and supplies makes things tough. But the islanders are strong and resourceful. They built a close-knit community where everyone helps each other out, and that helps them face challenges every day. Things would be even better if they could find ways to manage their trash better, get more clean water, and have reliable electricity. However, they need help from outsiders to make these improvements happen, and that help hasn't come around yet. Despite the difficulties, the people of the Santa Cruz del Islote stay positive. They love their island home and strong bonds they share with each other. That feeling of belonging and happiness is what truly matters, no matter what the future holds. Santa Cruz del Islote shows just how tough and supportive people can be. They figured out how to live on a tiley island with not much stuff, and they become a close-knit community because of it. Life isn't always easy there, but the islanders love their home and each other so much that they make it work. Leaving this island, we remember how strong people can be, no matter what. Santa Cruz del Islote might be small and packed, but it's a place overflowing with happiness and a special way of life, even when things get tough.